My name is Aruch Puntpaya, and I am the Operations Manager here at the O'Brien Water Reclamation Plant. This plant was originally called Northside, and it was built to serve residents in areas north of downtown Chicago. Since the plant opened in 1928, both the service area and the population we serve have nearly doubled in size and numbers. The water that goes down your toilet, sinks, and drains eventually comes to us to be cleaned. All of this water flows through your community's local sewers into our interceptor sewers, and then eventually to our water reclamation plants where we clean the water and reclaim other valuable resources. The goal at our facilities is to reduce contaminants in water, such as suspended solids, biodegradable organic matter, pathogenic bacteria, and nutrients. Such contaminants are removed during three major phases of treatment, primary, secondary, and tertiary. This is where the three main sewers that come into the treatment plant converge and flow into the plant. The core screens are here to protect the main sewage pumps of the treatment plant and screen out material that is larger than about four and a half inches in, in width. They stop pretty much anything that can fit into a sewer and flow into a treatment plant. We've seen timbers, two by fours, car tires, anything that might come and plug up one of our large pumps uh, gets removed at this process. After the screens, the water is pumped. We have six raw sewage pumps here, anywhere from 75 million gallons a day to 130 million a day capacity. This is where the water is lifted into the plant. At this point, once the water is lifted, it's gravity flow through the remainder of the treatment processes. Once the water is pumped up, it flows from the pump house to aerated grit tanks and primary settling tanks, where we use physical and mechanical means to remove fats and oils and to separate solids from the wastewater. So these are called aerated grit tanks. What's happening is the air is being bubbled from the bottom to keep the or organics and other organic material in suspension. The heavier sand and inorganic material falls to the bottom of the tank. And then there's a collector blade here, uh, these paddles that you see behind me that are scraping the flow into the middle of the tank. From there, it's being removed as a slurry to be dewatered and put into a dumpster, which gets hauled off by our scavenger service for disposal. And the next step after this is fine screens, where we're removing any debris similar to the coarse screens sent to a dumpster to be removed by our scavenger service and disposed of. This should be the bulk of any inorganic material between the grit and the fine screens that come into the plant are, are physically removed here. The screened and degridded water flows into primary tanks. Uh, these basins hold approximately a million gallons and are about 15 feet deep. What's happening here is the water is being held for about two hours. Uh, the heavy organic solids settle to the bottom during that time. The cleaner water leaves the primary settling tanks and moves on to step two, secondary treatment. The solids that have settled throughout our primary and secondary treatment processes are still very wet, which allows us to pump them through 16 miles of pipes to the Stickney Water Reclamation Plant. At Stickney, the solids from O'Brien go into temperature-controlled digesters where microorganisms break them down in a process similar to composting. After digestion, the solids pass through centrifuges, which work like washing machines, spinning at high speeds to remove additional liquid. The resulting drier solids are aged and air dried to reduce moisture content even further. Some of the resulting biosolids are mixed with wood chips to create EQ compost, which is a sustainable soil amendment. Our compost and biosolids have been used at golf courses, athletic fields, parks and recreational facilities, agricultural fields, forests, and for restoration of strip mines and other disturbed lands. What happens during secondary treatment? In rows of long, deep tanks, a community of microorganisms help remove organic material from the wastewater. The microbes need oxygen to thrive, so air is pumped through the water in secondary aeration tanks. These good microbes, or bugs as we like to call them, basically eat all of the remaining organic solids in the water, and as they eat, they get bigger and reproduce. Now that the bugs are fat and happy, and have done their work and eaten all of the organic solids in the water, they are sent to the final settling tanks, where they settle to the bottom, 
and clean water flows out the top. The clean water flows to tertiary treatment, more commonly known as disinfection. Our wastewater UV disinfection facility is the largest in the world, with a capacity to treat over 450 million gallons per day. There are seven UV channels here. Each channel has two banks of bulbs and each bank has 64 lamps. So there are a total of 896 light bulbs here. Each bulb is approximately 1,000 watts of power. So this facility at peak flow consumes almost uh, a megawatt of electricity. 896,000 watts of power uh, to power all these light bulbs. Each light bulb costs around $750. Uh, so as you can see, there's a lot of money invested here. Each lamp is approximately seven feet long. Uh, we use the term inactivation. We're not actually killing the bacteria here. This UV process inactivates it, prevents it from replicating, which for all intents and purposes kills the bacteria. It can't produce any more. Compared to the traditional chlorine disinfection that the district uses, obviously there's no chemicals involved in it. There's no byproducts in the waterway from uh, the, the reaction of chlorine. Uh, we're just using light bulbs and electricity. It's also a very fast process. The bacteria is instantaneously inactivated as it passes through the light, the intense light that the water goes through. Our effluent quality is determined by our NPDES permit. That permit is issued by the Illinois EPA. That defines the standards, the quality of our effluent to the environment. By this point, we've removed 99% plus of the contaminants in the water. We're at the end of our treatment process here in the plant. You know, the district water reclamation plants are kind of replicating what happens in nature. But what nature takes weeks or months to do, treating wastewater, there's naturally occurring bacteria in the streams that, that break down uh, pollutants uh, and clean the water naturally. Those processes take weeks, months, even years sometimes. The district and these water reclamation plants concentrate that into a process that takes about 12 to 24 hours. So what nature does in weeks and months, we can replicate here in 12 to 24 hours.